Okay, this is a strength of materials problem. And here we have an aluminum rod, ABC. And we want to replace this one with a steel rod. And they want us to find the diameter of the steel rod that we're going to be using. But they want us to meet two conditions. We want to make sure that when after we replace it with the steel rod, the deformation under this load will be the same as it was under for the aluminum rod. And at the same time, our stress in the steel rod will not exceed 25 KSI. Okay, uh, as we can see, we are given the E for aluminum and uh, for the steel. We have all the measurements for our aluminum rod. So the formula that we're gonna start working with is gonna be this one, the deformation due to axial loading. And we're gonna start with this one, with this condition that we have to meet right here. The deformation of the aluminum needs to be the same as the deformation of the steel. Okay, from here, I'm gonna plug in this into the aluminum side. We're gonna leave the steel side alone for now. Okay, here you go. We, uh, what I did here is I plugged in for the section of the aluminum rod from A to B, this one, plus the other section, which is the lower one, this one from B to C. They both have different lengths and different cross sections. We have the same force acting on them and our E is the same for both of them. They are both made out of aluminum. Now we can go ahead and plug in our values and see what kind of number we can find. Okay, go, I went ahead I plug in all the values, the force, the length of this piece divided by the cross section of this piece right here. times E of aluminum plus the other section, 27,000, the same force, times 18 inches, the length of this one, divided by the area of the cross section of this one right now, and times aluminum's E equals deformation for this uh, aluminum piece, which will also equal to deformation of steel calculate it and here's our value. I didn't round at this point, I'm just gonna round at the end. Now that we have this value, I'm gonna go back to this formula and now I'm gonna replace this one with this one. Okay, so we know all this number, this will be equal to the force on the steel, which is the same as it was over there, on the aluminum times the length of the steel rod L S E of the steel times the cross sectional area of the steel right here so area of steel now I'm gonna go ahead plug in values over here Actually, I'm not going to plug in. I'm going to solve for the area first and then plug in. Okay, I solve for A. We have PS times LS over ES and the deformation of the S of steel. Values plugged in, converted to the right uh, form. And that will give us an area of 1.31817 inches square. Now, they did not ask for the area, they asked for the diameter, so we have to solve it from our area. The area of our rod is a, a circle, so therefore pi r square. We have, uh, we are looking for the diameter, so I'm gonna put d over 2 on the square, solve for d, we're gonna have this equation, square root of 4a over pi plug in the values and that's gonna give us a diameter of 1.30 inches. Okay, we have one of our values.
this is one the diameter that we need to meet one of the conditions and that is to make sure that the steel rod will not deform more than the aluminum rod did okay now let's take a look at our second condition which is the steel rod cannot have an axial stress more than 25 ksi inside it for this one i'm gonna rely on this formula the axial stress formula we know the stress that's what they gave us we know the force is on top 27 k uh, kips and the area will help us uh, find the diameter okay here it is the area of the steel equals the force over the stress inside the steel i'm gonna go ahead and plug in the values okay and that's gonna give me an area for the steel of 1.08 inches square from this again we can find our diameter this is also circular so pi d over 2 on the square i'm gonna go ahead and solve for d d equals square root 4 a over pi i'm gonna plug in the values that we have and with a calculator we can find that the diameter that we can use is 1.17 inches okay we have calculated two diameters here we have a diameter 1.30 inches and another one 1.17 inches out of these two we're gonna have to pick one and only one's gonna be correct and what that one's gonna be the one that can satisfy both of these conditions that the problem asked us to meet in the beginning and that one will be the diameter that's gonna be the bigger one the larger one 1.17 1.30 so this is the larger one if we would pick the smaller one that would uh, give us into uh, lead us into a situation where the internal stress will be met over here we will not have more than what's specified but the deformation will be bigger than for the aluminum rod was so therefore we're gonna have to pick the larger diameter and therefore both of these uh, conditions are satisfied the, P uh, the internal stress inside the steel it will be actually less than 25 ksi because we're going to be using a larger diameter than what its uh, minimum value is which is fine that's not a problem